Hello and welcome to this series of public policy discussions. I'm joined by Raj Shivastava, incoming Dean of the Indian School of Business. Uh, Raj, thank you very much for uh, being with us. Let me ask you a couple of questions on uh, ISB. I mean, you're, you're, you're the incoming Dean. Uh, how do you view your uh, role ahead uh, and what do you bring with you uh, from your own experience having worked in so many universities and led so many universities around the world? Well, first of all, um, I'm no stranger to, I, uh, to ISB. I was uh, part of the founding faculty back in 2001 and taught the technology marketing course and the brand management course. So who, who reached out to you and how did you accept that one? Um, well, I was actually I heard about ISP mm. and I just happened to be in Wharton when they were having a meeting regarding ISP. And um, so I just walked into the meeting and um, whom was I talking to? Maybe Jitin Singh, or maybe Harbir, I forget. Mm. And uh, so I said, why is it restricted to Wharton? Mm. And uh, so they said, would you like to be involved? I said, why not? Mm. And so, so it was accidental that I happened to be in Wharton that day. Mm. And but, but you signed up for it, I mean. Yeah, I yeah. signed up for it yeah. because um, to me, it was aspirational from the very beginning. It remains aspirational. Um, uh, the, I believe uh, that with the kind of support that we have uh, from the business community, uh, the kind of uh, attention that we are able to uh, get from the students and the kind of opportunities that are available to our graduates, uh, that uh, we can um, you know, make it into one of the top institutions in Asia. And I'm, I'm, I've made a comment in the past that uh, you know, we could simply be a Western style, a good Western style business school in India. Mm. Or we could be an Indian school with not only Indian, but some of the best Asian insights, mm. which are valued worldwide and which gets us into the, you know, the upper echelon of, uh, of the top business schools. And I would rather be an Asian school that is in the, that's regarded as one of the best, as opposed to be simply following uh, you know, Western principles. So there's a lot to, uh, lot to learn, you know, in India, we talked earlier about healthcare mm. and how, you know, Indian healthcare delivery systems are far more efficient than anything that I'm seeing in the US as an example. Um, if we look at uh, the opportunities that are available, look at the scaling up potential with the financial markets opening up, uh, you know, we have uh, the, the Aadhaar, mm. you know, project and uh, that is going to provide a platform, uh, for example, in financial inclusion, and uh, that will allow us to leapfrog. Mm. And so if you, if you look at emerging markets in general, very often the emerging markets have leapfrogged a generation of technology, or they've gone from generation zero to generation three. And uh, so when it comes to ISP, I think we could be uh, a little bit disruptive in the marketplace. Um, but we have to balance the insights from the West with the insights from the East. We have to learn uh, what makes uh, Indian companies like Tata successful. We also have to learn why did Foxconn from Taiwan you know, succeed. So that's what I mean by balancing thinking you know, from the East and West. The other element is that we need to, uh, you know, we are an applied school, we are, we are a business school. Uh, we need to think of impact on the, on the business community, which means that we need to balance theory and practice. Mm. You know, how do we translate our research into actions? How do we use our understanding of the business to shape the research that we do? Right. How is the world uh, going to be different for students who are entering, uh, let's say, your uh, you know, uh, college today? Uh, and how should they be preparing for it? And should their outlook be different from what it was earlier or even today? This is not just a comment about ISP students. It's a comment for student spirit. Uh, the world is changing very rapidly. You know, when I graduated with my engineering degree, companies like um, you know, Hindustan Lever, ITC, they used to have two-year training programs. You know, they hired you as a trainee and they treated you rather well for two years for you to learn on the job. Uh, nowadays, the product life cycles are getting shorter. 
and uh, you know the competitive stress is higher. So these companies, you know, need people who are able to handle complexity, you know, much more quickly than kind of learning slowly on the job. There are many jobs that exist today that didn't even exist five years ago. So while I may have gone through two or three kinds of jobs, most people who are entering the marketplace you know, through education today, they will be ch their scope of their job is going to be changing you know, every three, four, five years. And so organizations such as ISP need to teach these people to learn how to learn. Okay, so they have to be able to reinvent themselves. So one is we need to provide them that capability. So they need to be more in a problem solving way of learning rather than reading and learning. And uh, the second thing is that we also need, we meaning ISBs of the world, IMs of the world, need to look at our contract with, uh, with our students and alums as longer than when they are in the program. You know, we need uh, to look at uh, uh, continuous uh, you know, uh, you know, education, uh, reboot programs, come back every five years for, for a couple of weeks. And uh, so we need, we need a long-term engagement and we need a commitment to, to lifelong learning. But uh, uh, the other thing that's going to be different, uh, let's say from earlier generations of people passing through Indian schools, is that the uh, market for human capital is totally global. Um, yesterday's Economic Times was talking about uh, how the foreign, com you know, financial you know, sector and the tech sector are just swamping around the IITs and picking the, picking the students up for salaries that you and I wouldn't even imagine. And uh, so the, the market is global, the opportunity is global, but the competition is also global. And uh, so one of the things that we ought to be doing, you know, with our students is really including an experiential component. So let's say, if, you know, if you're talking about an IIT, can we squeeze in one term where they actually go and work with a company? But we also need to be including a global component because it doesn't help if you know how to compete in Maharashtra, if you know how to compete in the NCR. Mm -hmm. You have to compete globally. Mm -hmm. And so we, we need our students to have uh, exposure and uh, when I say our students, I also mean our faculty. So I would like ISP faculty to be on assignment in Hong Kong and London and so on, where they can go for a semester. I would also like to see an environment where faculty not only go to a sabbatical to another university, but faculty go and spend uh, you know, uh, you know, a month at Godridge or a month at Tata's, because we have to learn better the problems that they are facing mm. so we can address them better. And transmit them to the students who in any case are entering a far more challenging world than ever before. Yeah, but also also get the managers into the classroom. So if let's say I'm teaching a class that has 30 contact hours, maybe five or six contact hours could be coming from individuals in the business community who are dealing with the same problem that I'm addressing in my classroom. So. We, we, need to, we need to have uh, the borders of a classroom a little bit more porous. And, and broad, and that's a very good note to end on. Thank you so much for speaking with us, Raj. Thank you, pleasure is mine. Thank you.